I promised you more reviews of headphones and that's exactly what we're looking at today. Halu's new release, the S35 ANC. With this release, Halu are the latest brand to try their hand at a wallet-friendly, over-ear, wired wireless headphone combo. They certainly haven't compromised on features, offering up to 42 dB hybrid active noise cancellation, button and gesture controls, 40 mil dynamic drivers, as well as high-res audio certification when used in wired mode. They're also packing gaming mode, up to 60 hour battery life with ANC switched off and Bluetooth 5.2 connectivity. They're available in three color schemes, blue black, which I'll be reviewing today, oat and Pantone's color of the year for 2022, very Perry, which is the color that you see above. Apparently it represents courageous creativity. I could probably live without that as long as we're getting good sound and great value for money. So without further ado, let's get on with the review and dive straight into the unboxing. Now I mentioned in the intro that this is definitely a release for those on a budget. If you compare the price of the S35, which is periodically between $39.99 and $49.99 US dollars on AliExpress, that's quite a bit cheaper than their competition, the like of the Edifier 820NB and the Soundcore Q30 which are typically between sort of 50 and 60 pounds here in the UK and the unboxing experience here does kind of reflect the price there's nothing too fancy Halu boasts a trendy design with incredible sound and you can see that I've gone for the conservative dark blue option rather than very peri and in the bottom corner you can see that you've got that high-res audio certification on wired mode only and hybrid ANC two of the headline features and when you flip the box over you'll see on the back that Halu have given you a really nice bullet point summary of all of those key features a lot of which we mentioned briefly in the intro but in case you missed it the headphones are capable of up to 42 db deep noise cancellation where they're using both the feed forward and feedback mics to bring you that hybrid anc effect Halu have used the industry standard Bez 2500 chipset, which we've seen before with the likes of the Soundcore Q series and many models of mid to premium tier TWS. And that's capable of Bluetooth 5.2 connectivity using the AAC and SBC codecs. They're also capable of certified high res audio, but that's only using the three and a half mil jack in wired mode. Halu have also introduced the Halu Sound app, which we'll take a closer look at later on in the review. There's also a mention of environmental noise cancellation for your calls. And again, you'll be able to judge how effective this is in the call sample section. The box gives you that first view of the headphones and there's a real Sony XM4 vibe going on here in terms of the design. But once you get inside the box, you start to see where some of those compromises have been made in terms of what you're getting for the money. To keep the costs down, Halu have rationed to some degree the accessories there's no carry case included and whilst you do get some cables they're budget cables really neither the jack cable nor the charge cable are particularly great quality in fact they're much of a muchness in terms of what you see across the industry the jack cable in particular is a little bit short to be of any real practical use but I find it very difficult to hold this against Halu because the amount of times I've actually used a cable which has been included with a TWS or headphones, I can probably count on one hand. A carry case on the other hand would have been useful but I do understand why Halu have omitted it. The manual is a small folded monochrome affair in English and Russian on one side and Chinese on the other. And whilst the diagrams and accompanying text are pretty clear and there's no real ambiguities, I do feel like this is an area the vendors should look to improve in the future. So moving on to design, there's nothing especially revolutionary about the S35, but let's face it, unless you're Dyson, you're slapping a big hoover on the front, it's kind of hard to get creative when it comes to a set of over-ear headphones. Even so, the gold accents and the wishbone style hooks do kind of lend themselves to the Sony XM4, but Halu have put their own slants on it with their logo on the side of the flat touch panel on the cup. The construction of the S35 ANC is almost exclusively plastic, at least from the shell's perspective, and the headphones weigh in at 293 grams. That makes it one of the lighter sets, which I've tested, and it does show a little bit when you hold them in your hands for the first time. Now, there are pros and cons to this lightweight design. The headband, for example, which is quite thin, has quite a lot of maneuverability, so it doesn't feel too firm, but by the same token, you could imagine it snapping quite easily if you put too much pressure pressure on it. And when you're handling the S35, certainly for the first time, you give it a little shake, they do feel a little rattly. 
that's mainly down to the use of plastic as opposed to an aluminium alloy for the hinges. I wouldn't say this makes them feel especially flimsy or anything like that, but where they're using plastics instead of metals, that is going to impact on longevity if you don't treat them right. I'm not saying you have to treat them with kid gloves, but just be sensible, don't go trying to snap them or anything. The headphones, like most others, have a full tilt and twist range. The twist range is just over 90 degrees. They tilt upwards and fold inside themselves for added portability. Now one of the quirks to the design is the headband, which is reinforced. It does have a metallic strip inside and it does extend. It's got teeth in there that spread out on both sides and give you quite a bit of extra room. But in its default position, it's quite narrow. What this means is it's going to work well for all sorts of heads of different shapes and sizes, whether you've got a big head, small head, whether you're old or young. The likelihood is it's going to wear well on you. The clamping force, it's there. I mean, it's just about noticeable, but I wouldn't say it detracts from the comfort. I have probably a larger than average size head and they wear perfectly well for me and they track the contours of my head pretty well. Even wearing a baseball cap or wearing glasses, I didn't find that this posed an issue either. There are two main facets to the design and ergonomics that make the S35 particularly comfortable. Firstly, the protein padding, which is situated on the headband and on the cups, is very good. At first glance, the padded area seems a little bit short. It certainly doesn't feel that way. I'm thinning a little bit in the crown area and I didn't notice any discomfort. On the ear cups, there's a nice amount of weight, a nice amount of give, and it measures around 20 mil in thickness, comparable to most of the competition. And to complement that, Halu have made the openings on the inside of the cup larger than your average headphone at 63mm high and 46mm wide. Now if we compare the size and the shape of that opening to something like the One Audio A10, it's not quite as narrow and it's not quite as oval shaped and that was a model where I could feel it pinching slightly against the outside of my ears. But it's these minor design nuances which contribute towards the comfort and that coupled with the subtle but attractive appearance means that the S35 are a big hit when it comes to the ergonomics. And they don't just look good on the headphone stand, they also look good when they're on your head as well. From both the front and the side profile, they don't protrude too much like something like the Soundcore Q series. And for me, they track better the contours of your head than something like the Edifier 820NB or the One More Sonoflow. Here you can see I'm controlling the headphones predominantly from the right hand cup, but as well as the buttons which reside on the bottom of the cup, you've also got the flat surface area where you can see the H logo. And like with something like the Soundcore Q series, you've got the ability to hold that down or tap it to be able to conduct certain controls. And one such control is holding it down for a couple of seconds to initiate a temporary transparency mode, something I found very useful. The rest of the controls are all on the bottom of the right cup and you've got a nice simplistic three button layout with the ANC button located at the back, a volume control in the middle and power button at the front. With the volume button, you short press to increase it and long press to reduce it. It takes a little bit of getting used to. I probably would have preferred a rocker here. The power button is more of a multifunction button. It does stuff like cycling through tracks. And that's something that you might have to take a little bit of getting used to. Also on the right cup, you've got a three and a half mil jack port, which allows you to use the headphones in wired mode. Remember, if you're using them in wired mode, you do lose the functionality of the microphone. You've also got a USB-C socket here for charging the headphones. While it's charging, the indicator LED turns red and then it changes to white once it's fully charged. It takes around two hours for a full charge. Unfortunately, there's no quick charge feature here, which is a little bit of a shame. The documented battery life of 60 hours with ANC off and 40 hours with ANC on during test it looks like that's quite accurate it won't be far short of those figures the battery estimates that halu give you are at 50 percent volume i was testing them at quite a bit above that about 75 80 percent on wired and on wireless as the headphones are quite quiet so that figure may reduce slightly but so far it looks like it's a reasonably accurate estimate moving into the audio and sound signature the S35 boasts the usual 40 mil dynamic drivers. They're able to deliver high res audio courtesy of wired mode and in wireless they default to the AAC codec. Now if you're used to budget headphones sounding really harsh on the trebles and really bloated on the bass lines, then I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with the S35. Sound is really quite pleasant, making them very easy to listen to throughout a variety of different music styles. Despite a sizable dip from the sub bass into the mid bass, it doesn't really feel that noticeable. On tracks like God is a Woman by Ariana Grande, where the sub bass comes in quite thick, around a minute in, 
Whilst the wobble that you get from bass rich headphones is definitely absent here, there's still enough here for non-bass heads to avoid them sounding excessively thin, although on more simplistic tracks the bass can sound a little disattached. That said, if you like house or techno, you'll probably feel that the S35 need a little bit more punch and inevitably this will have you reaching for the EQ. The point of emphasis on the S35 is a gradual elevation from around 400Hz onwards. The relatively flat response between 1 and 3K gives the impression of more detail and it contrasts well with the flat recessed lower frequencies to prevent instruments sounding sharp or edgy. There's a coldness to the tone, the focus on the mid-range gives greater emphasis to vocals, especially female vocals which sound really nice, crisp and present. There's decent attack to tams, cymbals and in particular shakers. The clarity is good and you've got quite a bit of texture to your percussions. The soundstage is reasonably wide and it's straightforward to locate instruments most of the time. On Crazy by Seal and Crucify by Tori Amos, the percussion and the bass guitars and again percussion and pianos respectively project with sufficient distance and reasonable depth as well. Resolution is okay, it's as you would expect at this price, it's not earth shattering but it is certainly good enough for the money. You've got some level of customization of the EQ through the Halo Sound app. It's a new app which was launched along with the S35 and is quite embryonic as such so don't expect too much of it, at least in its current guise. I'm testing the Android version here and as always you're bombarded with a bunch of privacy policy notifications and requests to turn on or allow certain permissions. Once you've done all that the S35 will show in the center of the main screen. On the main status tab you'll be able to rename the device, toggle A and C and see how much battery is remaining but first you'll likely be prompted to update the firmware. I went ahead and did this and after less than 150 seconds the firmware was updated to version 1.0.8.3. Once that's over and done with it will automatically reboot and you're back in the main screen where you've got three ribbons along the top, status, sound and settings. Sound allows you to select one of their five presets, you've got default, bass, rock, soft and classical and as always unfortunately I found the default to be the best option. The presets aren't horrendous like with some TWS and headphone apps but you're going to want the ability to customize the EQ and tailor it to your own preferred sound signature which unfortunately the Halo Sound app doesn't have right now. If you're on Android I highly recommend using Wavelet to give you more granularity over the control of your EQ. You've got lots of different settings here including an abundance of different presets and a 9 band custom EQ. There's much more depth to the EQ than you typically get with TWS or headphone apps. You can store the different presets depending on which set of headphones that you're using and it's universal it will work with any Bluetooth connected device. You've got also an intriguing section called Sound Market which I assume is going to be the mechanism for loading alternative presets but with no sound effects currently in there it's a little bit of a mystery. In the settings tab you can trigger firmware updates manually, you can also toggle gaming mode and you've got an interesting feature called find my earphone or headset depending on which screen you tab into. Provided your headphones are connected it will then play a sound on the device itself which sounds a little bit like this. It was certainly loud enough for me to hear in a reasonably large although admittedly quite quiet room. But I think it's loud enough and the LED flashes periodically as well. For me it's a very useful feature and a welcome addition. The headphones do support multi-point connectivity and I was able to connect to two simultaneous devices. But there does appear to be some limitations in terms of how you can use it. It will interrupt music that you're listening to on a PC with a phone call for example. But if you try and listen to media on your phone instead it doesn't seem to work in that way. Whether it's a bug or whether it's just how it's implemented I'm not really sure. Active noise cancellation on the S35 ANC is actually pretty good. It's not hitting the heights of some of the premium newer headphones like the Sony WH-1000 series but it's certainly comparable to the One Audio A10 which I reviewed last time around. And comparing them to the One Audio I find that active noise cancellation is generally a little bit stronger, it performs better outdoors and indoors and it deals with fans, extractor fans, PC fans, air conditioning units and those kind of low rumbling sounds. 
a little bit better. It's not going to negate conversations which are going on nearby, but it does muffle them ever so slightly. I put them to the test in a variety of different scenarios, but two in particular, outdoors and in a coffee shop. Starting in the coffee shop, certainly when you've got music playing, it does very effectively get rid of a lot of those background noises. Without music playing, you'll still hear those distant conversations. You just won't be able to make out any of the words. Outdoors, engine and traffic noises are pretty much eradicated altogether. On particularly windy days, you might be able to sense some wind coming through, but that's pretty normal when it comes to over ear headphones and the intensity of that is very much dependent on how they fit you. In terms of transparency mode, well, it's okay, but again, it's a little bit of an Achilles heel here. It's not quite as natural as the One Audio, and you can probably hear a little bit more, although again, conversations which are a little bit more distant are a little bit harder to discern. Voices nearby can sound a little raspy, and you can't always make out everything that they're saying, but you have to remember the sort of price point which we're talking about here. And the S35 fares very well in comparison to a lot of the competition. The ANC strength is better than the One Audio A10. It's better than the Tronsmart Q10 as well. It's about comparable to the One More Sonoflow, and it's a little way short of the Soundcore Q series. But when you consider that most of those products are priced much higher, I think you're getting a very good return for the money. The only slight annoyance is that when you switch them on for the first time, they don't default to A and C on, you have to manually trigger it every time. Next up is call samples, where we'll take you through a number of different scenarios, starting with indoors and silence. Okay, so we are testing the Halu S35 ANC in an indoor environment with absolutely no background noise whatsoever. The reason why we choose this first is because, well, it's a clean scene, so it's a true representation of how your voice is going to sound when you've been able to reduce all of the sounds around you in uh, scenarios such as where you have to make an important call and you're at home and nobody's in, or if you have to do an interview or a presentation, something like that. What we're looking for is the tone and the weight in your voice and to try and hear whether it's digitized in any way through excess compression. Okay, so this time we're testing the Halu S35 at a very busy coffee shop. So what we're trying to replicate here is the lights off when you're making a call in the coffee shop or maybe a busy office, something like that. And the majority of the sound around you is distinct chatter. So you've got bunch of conversations going on nearby. This is how well the S35 does at distinguishing your voice from those around you. Okay, so we are testing the Halu over ear headphones this time in an outdoor environment. And listen how they perform when they're having to deal with the sort of sounds which you expect to hear on your daily commute. So lots of wind noise, lots of traffic noise, splashes from puddles, etc. That is the Halu S35. So to summarize, I'm really impressed with the S35 ANC. It's a very solid release from Halu, especially when you consider its price of somewhere between 40 and $50. It makes it a very compelling option, especially for those who are on a strict budget. The neutral sound is very enjoyable. It never gets too harsh or fatiguing, so it's suitable for Pretty much all music styles, although if you're an extreme bass head, you might want to look elsewhere. ANC is pretty good. It's comparable to others in its price category, if not better. It's not bad on calls, as you heard, especially outdoors, where it fares pretty strong. The addition of gaming mode is a useful feature. The ergonomics are very good, they're suitable for heads of all different shapes and sizes. And having app support is useful as well, although I do feel that this is an area that Halu should and unquestionably will improve over time. I would have perhaps liked to have seen more accessories such as a carry case. And whilst you have got multi-point connectivity, I couldn't get this to work reliably. So this is something else that Halu can perhaps look to tweak and improve in the future, perhaps with future firmware releases. But overall, I'm pretty impressed with the S35, decent all-rounders, and if you're on a strict budget, then I wouldn't hesitate to splash out on them. 
Next up, I've got my 2023 core quality test. It is finally going to be dropping in the next few days. So you'll be able to compare lots of different models and how they perform in indoor and outdoor scenarios. If you enjoyed the review, please do give it a like and consider subscribing if you haven't sooner. For now, it's Reagan Cipher signing off.